Welcome back to this series. In the previous video, I taught you everything you need to know to get started with the charter accounts, such as adding nominal accounts, editing nominal accounts, how the charter accounts is organized on Sage Accounting, and other things too. I'm now going to teach you how to add customers to Sage Accounting, how to edit customers, and then future videos will build on that. So where are customers listed on Sage Accounting? Well, they come under contacts. If I click on contacts, then the list of all customers and suppliers will appear. So customers and suppliers both come under contacts and clicking on contacts will show a list of all customers and suppliers. If you want to filter this information, so just customers show, then hovering over contacts so the drop down list appears and clicking on customers will just show customers and the same with suppliers but we'll be covering suppliers in a later video so i click on customers i'm now on the customers page and you can see at the top here create view and manage your customer records which is pretty much what i'll be doing in this video You'll see that I have a table here and I covered tables in the previous video. This table is identical in the way it works to the chart of accounts in the sense that we can click on the headings here and we can increase the amount of records that show and flip pages. That was all covered in the previous video. So how do we add a customer to Sage Accounting? These are customers ideally that we want to invoice. So if we have a customer on Sage Accounting, we can invoice that customer. We can raise invoices on that customer's record. We can record payments they've made. We can generate statements of their account. So these are customers that we want to monitor and that we want to offer credit terms to. If you have customers that are one-off customers, let's say you have a shop, some random person comes into the shop, buy something, you might not ever see them again. You wouldn't add that customer to Sage Accounting. These are customers we're going to have relationships with that we need to send invoices to who are going to pay us. Okay, go to the top right here and click on new customer. We simply need to fill out all the details and click save. It's very simple. The only information you really have to put in is the business name. You can simply put in the business name, click save, and the customer record will be added. However, entering as much information as you can is best. So let's do our first customer and their business name is example customer LTD. The contact name is good old Joe Blogs. Now the reference, the reference is the reference you want to give to this customer. Traditionally, the way this would work on Sage is it would be the first three letters of the business name followed by a number. So for example, EXA, for example, customer limited, 001. If you then had another customer with EXA as their first three letters, you'd do EXA 002. It's really up to you how you reference this, but these references can come in handy. And if there is some sort of structure, some sort of logical reasoning, organization to your references, then that will help you in the future. But don't panic right now because these things can be edited at a later time. And I'll show you how to do that in this video. So the email, let me put in my email address for this example, just in case you need to email me with any of your questions or if you're interested in any of my services info at bpfs-online.com mobile number we'll just make that up telephone number once again let's make that up and then we put in their address details so let's do one two three example street address two it's the second line their address town city example town county example county postcode ex 111 aw this is all hypothetical 
account default. So this is the nominal account we want to appear by default when we're raising invoices on this customer's account. So this customer is likely to be sale of products. Then click sale of products. This is not set in stone. We can always change this nominal account whenever we raise an invoice for this customer. This is purely here to speed up the process, to make things easier for you. So when you raise an invoice, the nominal account is already selected, 4,000 sales products. Now it might be at this point that you realize you don't have an appropriate nominal code for this customer. That's why in the previous video, I showed you how to add a new nominal code. So at this point, I would just save the record, go and add that nominal code, and then come back here, and I'll show you how to come back here in a moment. Their VAT number, if it's a VAT reverse charge customer, you can tick this box. VAT will be covered in a later course. Now, something I didn't cover was this little drop-down list here. It could be that your customer is not in the UK or the country of residents of the business where the where the uh, the business is uh, is headquartered so you can click on this drop down list and perhaps this customer is in canada or europe or us or somewhere else now what changes if i click on canada as an example is you can see county has gone and province has come up and we have the provinces of canada so it's all here to help you let's go back to uk and ireland and do example county I'm from Essex, lived in Suffolk, lived in Norfolk. Where are you? Let me know below. Okay. I'm happy with that. There's a tab here, delivery address. If the delivery address is going to be different from the invoice address, so this is the invoice address, then untick this box and fill in the delivery address. So you'll then have an invoice address and a delivery address. This is useful for like dispatch notes, things like that. But let's just tick that because it's going to be the same and I can imagine for a lot of you the delivery address and the invoice address are going to be the same that the customer's only got one address but that's not always going to be the case and if it's not then you have this feature available to you payment details this is a really interesting feature that is often neglected so many people use accounting software and never use it to its full capacity payment details is great Set credit limits. I have a whole course about credit control and how to improve cash flow for a business. Credit limits, credit terms are great ways to do that. If you do set credit limits with your customers, then put in the credit limit for this customer. Let's say it's 5,500. If there are credit terms and there should be credit terms, tick the credit terms and put this in. It could be due on receipt, like immediate payment. It could be net monthly. It could be 15 days after invoice date. Whatever the credit terms are, the payment terms, enter that information here. You can even put the terms and conditions in this box. Please do this. This will help the business. It will also help when it comes to invoicing later on, when I raise invoices, when you see me raise invoices on Sage Accounting, this information, such as the payment terms, will show on that invoice. So it's important that the customer record is set up correctly. If you need your customer's bank details, for whatever reasons, this is not your bank details, your customer's bank details, you can enter them here. Might be useful if you ever have to send refunds to customers or there could be other reasons why you need your customer's bank details. Put them in here. But this is obviously not essential. Defaults. This is an area that I'll cover in a later video. But you can have the price default on your invoices as the sales price, the trade price, or the wholesale price. I suggest you leave this on sales price for now. We then have this final tab, which is notes. So you can make notes on this customer record, such as speak to Jim before Christmas 2025, or credit terms agreed, review summer 2027, or Jim is leaving 
ensure new contact is added or whatever. Be as creative as you want to be. This is purely up to you. Will you put in the notes? You don't even have to use notes if you don't want to, but this feature is here. What I've done in the past is use notes for when it comes to credit control. If they're not paying the steps you've taken, keeping a record of dates and times and how you contacted the customer is a great tool for credit control. It keeps a record of your contact with the customer. Okay, I'm happy with all this information. I click save and you'll see that example customer LTD is now on my customer list. How do I edit this customer? So let's say that their address has changed, their contact has changed, their credit limit has changed. All you need to do is click on the line, so example customer, and the example customer's record will appear. And we'll be spending a lot more time on this activity tab later on. But for now, how do we edit this customer? We'll go to contacts and addresses and simply just click on the edit buttons to edit the information. Payment details, click on the edit buttons to edit that information. The notes are here. If I click on the notes, I can add new notes, delete, save, etc. But let's go back to our customers list and let's add some more to build this customer list. So let's do example customer to LTD and their reference is going to be EXA002. I'm not going to fill out the rest of this information because it's just not needed. I'm just trying to demonstrate to you how to add customers. And let's do another one. Let's do Joe Blogger, Joe001. Obviously, when you add your customers, fill in as much information as possible. Let's just do one more. Let's do Ford Motors, PLC, FOR001, and save that customer. So you can see that I'm building up this customer list. And if I want to edit any of these customers, once again, I just click on the line, I'm taken to their record, and I can edit accordingly. Now you can have multiple contacts for a customer. So when I add a new customer, you'll see that there was only one contact name and details that I can enter. But once the contact has actually been added to Sage, once the customer is on Sage, such as example, customer limited, if you go to contacts and addresses, you can actually add multiple contacts. So if I click on new contacts, I can add another contact. So this time, instead of being Joe Blogs, it's Lisa Smith. She is the director. I can add in her details. I'm just making this up, obviously. Click Save, and that contact has been added. I can add another one now. So you can actually create these customer records to hold a lot of information about your customers. If you're clever, creative and ambitious, then Sage is more than just accounting software. It can be software to really help boost sales, to keep records and notes and crucial information about your customers. So let's go back to the customers list. That's it. That's how you add customers to Sage. That's how you edit customers on Sage Accounting. Any questions, let me know below and I'll speak to you in the next video.